Hi, this is Margaret Bird and welcome to Color Quest. And welcome to November in the Pacific Northwest. We had some fairly significant windstorms the last few days and all of the leaves are now gone, or at least they're on the ground. And my area here where I live, if it's not an evergreen tree, it has a lot of maple and birch. But right in my neighborhood, the one tree that I don't have is oak. And oak is a remarkable tree in so many ways in the natural color world. And today on Color Quest, we're gonna be looking specifically at one form of tannin that comes from the oak tree, or at least a small friend of the oak tree, and that is oak galls. I've always been curious about oak gall tannin. I've heard a lot about it. I did use it in the last few videos in a powder form. Got myself a few whole pieces so I could see what that was all about. Oak galls are one of the most popular tannin resources in the natural dyes world and they have an incredibly high content of tannin that they create a wonderful bond option for a mordant. So let's go crush some oak gall tannin and see what we can do with that as a mordant and a sort of dye as well. So I read that the oak symbolizes strength and wisdom and endurance. And certainly a piece of oak or pieces of oak hold that definition when it comes to natural dyeing. And the reason for that is that oak has quite a bit of tannin. Now tannin is a wonderful plant-based mordant that is used in natural dyeing as opposed to or in conjunction with some of the other popular mordants the metal mordants like alum and iron maybe even copper and tin as well as soy milk which is a really popular one to use nowadays because it is also plant-based and it does a wonderful job of creating a bind because of the proteins in soy. So I guess you could consider that a mordant is a way in which to create a kind of endurance for your natural color. Mordants help with the bond between natural color and the textile or fiber that you're using and can help for your colors to last longer. Natural colors fade. That's part of their living color loveliness. But mordants will help with keeping your color around a bit longer. So the tannin mordant is a great option. Another great thing about using tannin as a mordant is that they react in a really interesting and beautiful way with iron. So as you saw in the last few videos here on Color Quest, where we looked at different leaf echoprints using carrier blankets, we were playing around with the tannin iron combo. And that combo can create really beautiful and interesting lines that are black in nature from an echoprint perspective. And in utilizing them directly, with a tannin like oak gall, they will create a darker spectrum of grays and blacks, and even having some hints of blues and greens in some instances. So since I don't have an oak tree, let's say within walking distance of my home, I can purchase oak galls 
from botanical colors, which is where I get a lot of my dye sources that I don't forage for. But if you have oak in your area, looking for the oak gall itself can be a fun foraging activity. Now the oak gall is created by a wasp that lays its eggs on the oak tree itself and creates this small round dome to protect the egg. Once the eggs hatch, the wasp larvae make a hole, work their way out of the oak gall, and you'll see them on the ground scattered about. They aren't necessarily easy to find, so they are a bit of a treasure. So if you have oak and you do go looking for them, look for the gulls that have fallen on the ground and ones that already have a small round hole in them, which means the larvae have moved on to the ground to do the rest of their growing up to become mature wasps. Collect them. You don't need very much. You'll see in today's video that the percentages that we use for oak gall tannin can start off being quite small, 10% weight of fabric. So let's head into the dye studio, grab some of that oak gall tannin and see what it will do to a couple different kinds of fibers and also how it will interact with a particular dye. In this video, I'm gonna just look at hibiscus because I happen to have hibiscus dried flowers available. Thought it might be a good one to look for with tannin, see if it makes much of a difference to the color. I do know it will certainly help with the bond for hibiscus, which is notoriously fugitive. And I thought it might be fun to also look at what will happen if we use a tannin on top of another tannin material. In this instance, we'll be looking at wooden beads. And let's see how oak gall tannin interacts with iron in this video today as well too. Okay, I'm excited. I've really been curious about oak gall for a long time. So it's gonna be quite a little experiment fest in my dye studio this week. I'm so excited that you're going to be joining me. Let's go.
I adore the grays that we got today. And they were almost like a blue. They had this wonderful blue undertone to them. I've heard that you can sometimes see green undertones, but for whatever reason, <laughs> it was really presenting with blue this time. And wasn't it interesting that the tan in itself didn't make that much of a difference to the color of the hibiscus. I was surprised. I actually believe I might have gotten a darker hibiscus color when I used soy milk as a mortar in the past. So I'm wondering if perhaps what I'm going to see now is just that those that were dyed with a mordant pretreatment are going to potentially last longer in terms of the life of the color itself. Don't know, but it still was a really pretty pink. And with the introduction of iron, it turned into such a lovely group of light grays. I just loved all of them. Very subtle differences, not a big difference between a 10% cold soak overnight for the tannin versus a 10% hot soak for an hour. I felt like that didn't shift the color much. There was more coloration of the tannins on the textile, so I think really the difference that you might see, although slight, was really more about the undercolor of the tannin that dyed the textile itself. So I probably should try increasing my percentage of oak gall tannin by 20, 30, up to 50% of the weight of fiber and see what that does. I'm guessing that definitely is going to alter the color of the textile somewhat, particularly the protein-based textiles, and may in fact do some additional changing of the color or the bond longevity and dyeing those beads or putting those beads into a tannin and comparing what they looked like with their own tannin versus a tannin plus a tannin which is a fun little experiment to do it didn't make any difference really with the hibiscus dyed it seemed like maybe even the color on the wooden beads without the oka gall tannin soak might have been a tiny bit darker but I did achieve a different color with the iron modifier and although today's video is about oak gall tannin specifically know that there are other plant-based natural tannins out there some dyes have them already built in like for example avocado dye both the skins and the stones of that particular dye matter has tannin in it if a dye source has tannin, you really don't need to use a mordant, although it can always help. I always recommend it. And in this instance, oak gall is in itself a tannin. <laughs> so you can make some very light beige and neutral tones and then spice it up by utilizing iron as a color shifter or modifier. But if you'd like to learn more about some other natural tannins, you can look towards some other videos I have here. One in which specifically I look at pomegranate skins. The skins of pomegranate are a known source of tannin that's used in natural dyeing regularly. You can also have tannins available in other types of tree bits, bark and branches, nuts, things like walnuts and chestnuts. They have tannins and can be used as a tannin mordant. Of course, with oak gall, what's nice about it is that you're getting the tannin mordant quality without much color. So when you're utilizing some of these other natural plant-based tannins, you're also going to see that they're like a dye and they change the color of your textile. So it's nice to be able to have something like oak gall tannin that doesn't actually alter the color of your textile. Maybe slightly, but not much. Okay, next time on Color Quest, I want to continue to look at the oak tree and another gift that it provides, and that is the acorn. Now, I don't have oak trees right here, 
but I did have a chance to travel and I forged some acorns. And next week, we'll look at some pretty beautiful ways to use acorn in your dye practice. Remember, it is a tannin, so you can play around with the color as well as iron, hint, hint, and get some pretty beautiful results. So I hope you'll join me as we look at acorn. Thank you, Oak Tree, for your wisdom, your strength, and your endurance. Have a great week, and I will see you next Friday. There's so much noise between lawn, <laughs> I don't know, motorized stuff, planes overhead, and I can hear the cars on the street.